Yeah, my, my character that I, I play in Modern Warfare uh, 3 is Truck uh, Delta. Um, you know, a real sort of straightforward guy uh, out of the four, four-man team. I guess he's the most sort of like uh, down the middle, technical, you know what I mean? A real sort of uh, stand-up guy. But they're all stand-up guys, but he's a bit more straight down the line. Um, he's a, a um, you know, a t tough character, tough cookie, you know, he, he gets on with everyone else, but, you know, if there's, someone's out of line, he's the first to say, hey, bro, you're out of line, we got to do it properly, so uh, I'm having a good time playing him, I'm just getting to adjust to, to who Truck is. Um, well, my involvement, you know, I, I was asked by, you know, the Activision team and the Call of Duty team to be a part, as they do, they use actors, I guess, that they, they like, and, um, you know, that process goes through a casting process, and, you know, I was uh, asked to be, you know, this character truck, but, you know, my involvement in it is really because I love to game, uh, I've got the other Call of Duties, I've played them for a good five years, I think, and... Yeah, it was, it's a, you know, it's like a dream come true. Like, I haven't told any of my friends that I'm in uh, Call of Duty because, you know, we all play it uh, and it would just freak them out. And I don't want to tell them. I just want to see if they recognise my voice in it. But, you know, I, I, I am a gamer and, and I really wanted to uh, sort of see what that world was like, you know. Um, the thing about Call of Duty is that it's very realistic, you know, and so I, I always thought they used real people, you know, real soldiers, but it turns out, that, you know, it's actors, and I guess actors that can bring sort of some personality to some of the characters, so uh, I'm, I'm, you know, just thrilled to have a shot at doing it. Acting, you know, via voiceover is a different beast altogether. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, just, it's kind of like having a car and being able to drive, but you don't have to, you put your hands on the steering wheel. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, just go. Don't worry, you can, it will turn for you, because the acting's really done by the animation, but your voice, the textures of your voice kind of brings that alive. So that, it's a weird feeling. It's actually quite weird because, uh, you know, my first day, you know, the script's right in front of you. You know, I, I, brilliant. I don't have to remember my lines. I can just read them. Fantastic. But, you know, you do really get involved because you're using your imagination. Um, but I think it's fun, you know, as an actor to, 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 to be able to just use your voice in your vessel and you can pull as many different faces as you want and really get into the body language. You know, when I'm doing my scenes, you'll see later, but when I'm doing my scenes, I'm sort of like holding up fake guns and, you know, aiming at stuff in the booth and I look completely crazy to everyone else. But, you know, that's just my, uh, my method. So. It's one of the things, foundations of anything I want to do is you know, I want to enjoy myself doing it. And I've been acting for millions of years and... You know, at this point, it's, it's about the work. It's about, you know, having fun, having a good time. And you really get to, um, you really get to live your dream, you know. You're a soldier, and, and here's what happens. You're going to land out this helicopter, and you're going to take out these tanks. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my preparation was just I wanted to match the intensity of what, what, what we saw in the last game. Um, the authenticity as well. So really it was, a, you know, me preparing just, you know, what was my character going to sound like, um, you know, what the accent is going to be, <clears throat> you know, what, you know, and I wasn't told too much before I actually got here, but, you know, once I got here, that preparation sort of figuring out what Call of Duty actually expects from voiceover work, it, you know, was kind of like, oh, wow, they really go at it. And I, I know it was confirmed for me, but there's a lot of yelling there's a lot of screaming, it's a very loud sort of game, and so, you know, I had to get myself prepared for that sort of high-octane energy. That was my preparation. Tim Oliphant is in, is in uh, Modern Warfare 3. He's a great actor, and, you know, and I know from hearing from the team that he really enjoys sort of, you know, experimenting with his voice and pulling this character together. Um, but Call of Duty is definitely one of my favourite games to play. The thing about Call of Duty, though, for me, is that it just takes over my whole, like, three or four hours of my life. Like, literally. You know, I'll be sitting there, and four hours have gone, and I'm sort of, like, immersed in this world. So, um, but if I want a quick fix of games, then I'll play a sports game. But if I really want to get involved, you know, something like Call of Duty always works. No, I'm a gamer. I, I love gaming. I've been playing games since Donkey Kong on the little little box thing, you know, I used to play with. Um, and, you know, I progressed, you know, and I own an Xbox and a PS3 and I've got a Wii as well. Like, I'm, I'm a vagrant. Um, well, I think the success of video games is due to the value, for, value of money.
that you get for, for these games now, you know? Like, uh, it was pointed out to me, like, I think the average game is, like, 60 bucks. And for 60 bucks, you have, like, maybe three, 400 hours of like, gameplay, you know? And what with, you know, the way the, the, the games are made, sonically, visually, you're in a movie, you know? So you go see a movie, you go, I don't know, 15 bucks to see a movie, it's two, and a three, two, two, three hours, and then you play Call of Duty, and you're there, you know, for a month, possibly, in this movie, and you're in it as well. So I think that, you know, that's very, uh, a big component to, to why the games are so successful. But the games are just getting much better, you know? They're just so much better, so much more involved, and... Um, you know, given the that interactiveness, you know, just like a whole new experience. Um, I, I can only imagine what's next, you know, with the advent of 3D and 4D, you can just imagine what the gaming world's going to be like. So um, I think that people just love the idea that they can spend a little bit of money on this game and just have hours of fun on it. The Call of Duty Endowment, I think, is a phenomenal idea, and, uh, and, and hats off to the guys that put that together, because, you know, as an actor, you know, I get letters from uh, uh, vets and, you know, soldiers out there, you know, who, you know, they tell you things about their lives, and they're going home, and what's going on, and a lot of the, the, the common cases is I'm going back, I might be coming back, and I don't know what I'm going to do when I get back, and so on and so forth, and like... You know, I think that uh, Call of Duty, that's a huge success, uh, ha has, you know, just a, a great heart to be able to help some, some, some veterans that come back home, you know. Um, it's hard, it must be very hard for soldiers to, to, you know, get themselves back into life and, you know, sort of get back into society. So if there is a, uh, uh, you know, a foundation like this that can help them, you know, steer them in the right direction, I think that's a great thing. And by the way, you know, you know, the, the, you know, much to the creators of the of the game, much to their sort of, you know, high five. You know, a lot of soldiers actually love the game. You know, so I mean, it all goes full circle um, that you know they can you know possibly get help from from the Call of Duty Foundation uh, endowment. Um, so I'm, I think I you know as an actor that's a part of the team now, I think that's I'm, I'm proud of it, and you know I, I wish it a lot of success. T nineties on the road. T-90's on the road! They're gone. They're gone. Got some casualties here. It's Onyx team. Raj. Overlord, this is Meadow Zero Two. I need an evac for three casualties. Coordinates follow. Seven, Romeo, eight, five, one. I'm William Fickner. I play Master Sergeant Sandman in the new game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. With the video game, with this game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you know, each time we come into the studio, um, uh, I see clips of the scenes that we're going to work on and different places where the game is taking you that day. I would put Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 at, at, a, at a different place because uh, I think the story is more grounded than other things I've worked on. I feel like it's uh, uh, the characters or, you know, some of the characters were in previous games. They have a history. As soon as you start adding levels of history, then, um, you know, you're creating your own world and it really has its own world. But I'll tell you, before I started shooting this two weeks ago, before we started recording, uh, I had lunch with a good friend of mine, a big auto race buddy of mine. We go to see a lot of races together and he said, so where are you going? I said, I, I got to take off. I'm going to, uh, you know, do the voice on this game. He said, what's the game? I told him, I said, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. And I said, do you know it? And he goes, do I know it? Yeah. And he started naming characters and was completely familiar with the first two. I mean, really deeply. And um, said he couldn't wait for this one. You know, as soon as you see a clip of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, as soon as you see a clip of it, you see the intensity of what is happening. It's not just what's happening between men. You might be on a helicopter. You might be flying into a zone where, where all hell is breaking loose. And there are other people that are counting on you and they're calling back to you. And there's so much happening that, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a level of concentration to make sure that, you know, what you're saying is going gonna, is gonna to be heard. And, and, and that sometimes requires uh, a, a, a solid voice that can really cut through it all. Well, you know, the, the story is 
really comes out of so much of what happened before this in the game before in the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, there, so much happens in that game that really is the beginning of what is happening in this game. I'm much more concerned about what's happening in the moments and how do we make the moments true because the folks that are putting this game together do this better than anybody. And, uh, you know, that's why Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is going to really, you know, be unbelievable. Our good man Keith will, will be in that booth and he'll say to me, you're running right now. You know, you just, you just stopped. You're out of breath. You, you got to take a moment. You got to settle down. It's things like that, that the physicality, you know, it's little things like that that make all the difference in the world. I mean, just imagine a guy running in a scene and the voice coming out and he's not running. I mean, you hear that. But if he's running and all of a sudden his breath goes, come on, we got to go. I mean, taking one breath like that, like that's the moment. That's, you know, all of a sudden you're not in a game. You're, you're, you're somebody's really running. You're hearing it. You're experiencing that. And, and we try to get that as much as, you know, throughout every, every moment of the game. It seemed like it was the same for so many years, decades, certainly when I began working in film. And it's different now uh, in the last 10 years. Video games are part of, 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 of our landscape. It's part of, you know, how we work as artists and that. Uh, this, is, this in particular, like I say, you know, has been, uh, it's, it's been a great experience and something that I've really, really enjoyed working on. And, you know, I love it. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. If it's that one, yeah, I'm in. Currently en route to objective ice pick. You got something higher priority? Roger, Overlord. We'll get it done. Granite team is going after the daughter. We're gonna watch their backs. Bird is down, bird is down. Just get us as close to the roof as you can. Go, go! Head for the roof! We need to get to the roof, come on! Overlord, we have Russian tanks firing on Granite's position, requesting fire mission. Route to objective, ice pick. You got something higher priority? Glad to have you in our corner, Sandman. The Russians are using electronic countermeasures to jam our comms and guidance systems. The primary emission tower is on top of the stock exchange. I need your team to destroy it. The jammer is full spectrum, so until it's down, you'll have no radio contact. I have ground assets to get you close. Over. We cannot lose New York. We cannot lose New York. Are there any special mission units in the area we can request? No, but we received actionable intelligence on his bomb maker. The situation is developing. So I, I play a character named Grinch, um, which is not his actual real name on the birth certificate. Uh, I went to high school with a guy named Grinch, um, and I think that might have been actually his real name. But this is a code name. He's a Delta Force guy, so it means he's, you know, the best of the best. Uh, he's part of a group of badasses that are going all over the world and kicking ass and taking names. And uh, he's got a kind of a great attitude, kind of a cool sarcasm to him. And, uh, and uh, all in all, pretty fun, to, pretty fun for me to play. Well, the, you know, the, the VO work, and as, as opposed to the acting uh, on a television show or movie set or something. Um, it's still more or less the same. You know, you're working with a director, you're working with a group of people of, um, trying to help tell the story. The difference is it's very meticulous. You're going kind of line by line. Um, you know, uh, l literally almost every before every line, you're giving, you're, you're being given uh, the circumstances, the, the a, a lot to, because it, because you're you're um, because you're not in that world itself. You're in you know you're uh, you're needing to be told the, where you are, the level of intensity, the the volume, the you know the noises around you because none of that's there for you to work off of. And once you're given that, kind of comes back to the same deal. You know, the the cool thing about uh, when I first came in here um, when talking to the guys about the world they were trying to create was the truthfulness of, of the world, um, uh, which was, was, was kind of great to see. Um, so it was very refreshing to kind of see um, how much attention was being paid uh, to try to get that real military sound, real just straightforward um, and just trusting it. And um, 
I mean, I, I think the, the people who put these games together are so aware that the game itself is so visually stunning and intense and dramatic that they don't need to put so much on the performances. That was kind of cool. Um, I am not that familiar with video games. I, I don't play a lot of video games. Uh, it's good news, bad news, really. Um, because when I do play them, um, it's not just where did the time go, it's, it's what day is it, you know? It's, um, they're very, <laughs> they're so engrossing. Uh, well, I mean, the first thing that's sort of uh, immediately impressive is the guys kind of show me, the, you know, the things I'm involved in. It's, it's visually stunning and, um, and so engrossing, you know, the way you're kind of put in this position of, you know, going through it first person. And, uh, you know, the underwater, these images I saw of these, you know, the, these guys underwater going through the, was it the Holland Tunnel? I don't know what you guys are, I mean, it's un, it was unbelievable. It's kind of fun being part of a video game. And I think it says a lot about the video games that they're reaching out to uh, the level of talent that um, you see, and certainly in this game, I mean, Idris and, and um, oh, Fickner. I mean, those guys are amazing. They're unbelievable talents. Um, uh, I assume, like me, they're, they're interested and they're intrigued and it provides a, a, a challenge. It provides a, a way to reach a, an audience and a group of people that... Um, and I think, in the end of the day, it's just kind of fun, you know? Not a good day to be Delta. Not a good day to be Delta. Hook up! What the hell? What the hell? Maybe you can dark the one. What the hell? Thanks. Cool. I don't see anything moving down there. Hostiles on the roof! Good, maybe just tie one together. Right? Hostiles on the roof! Awesome. Raj! All right, Claire, move! Moving! That's awesome. Contact, second floor! Yes. Merlin's getting ripped apart down there.